All right, so I'm going to make a video all about understanding group by. And to get started, um, we always need to load the tidyverse in. That's the collection of packages um, that we use. And then I'm creating, actually, I should probably tab this over so it looks better. Um, Tribble is just a nice way to make a data frame in a way that is row wise or looks vertical. Um, so I can actually print this table too. Um, and basically you see that we have the name of someone and then let's call it their test score. So here I have three people, name, three people. Jen took the test twice, Sarah took the test twi uh, twice, and Ben took the test three times. And so just to, just to remind you, there's a, a few basic verbs. Um, the first is filter. And here I can give it some condition. So score greater than six. And if I run that, I basically get any time this data frame becomes only um, scores greater than six. And notice this does not pay attention at all to who. It literally just goes row by row and says, Jen had greater, this row had greater than six. Yep. This row had greater than six. Yep. Sarah had greater than six. Yep. Um, and so that's filter. We also have mutate. So score plus one will be the new column. And then we're going to just do score plus one. And so mutate makes a new column, um, leaving the same number of rows, of course. And just you can see, I literally added one to each score. Um, you could do something else. Um, you could do score centered equals score minus mean of score. Um, so mutate um, creates a new column based on some other organization of the column. So that's mutate. And then summarize, we haven't talked too much about. So again, let's look at data. Here's what it looks like. Summarize actually compacts it. It, it flattens it to one row. And so I got the mean score. I could have also gotten the SPO score. And it returns a data frame with just one row because it's taken the mean of all of these values, which is great. And then to keep going here, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this group by feature. And so I'm going to say, what if I did so data group by, and I'm going to basically say, I want to actually have this listen. I want to think about, let's print the data frame again. I want to think about Jen as being one group of scores, Sarah as being another group of scores, and Ben being another group of scores. So I'm going to do a group by name. And notice if I run that, nothing changes about the data frame. But it tells me that I have three groups um, based on the name column. And so uh, something underneath the data frame has changed, but nothing about the actual um, data so far. And so if you look at here, just pulling this over from the article I wrote on this, and I borrowed this from our bootcamp. Here was our original data frame with name and score. And then each group became based on the name. So there's going to be a separate data frame for each of those. Um, so this would be the Jen scores, this would be Ben scores, this would be Sarah scores, etc. So you think about it, kind of the data frame thinks of itself as splitting off into separate data frames, but it doesn't really show that to you. Um, right keep this over here because I think it's valuable to keep in mind. And so if I do this data group by, and let's actually start using the right for each one. And now if I do summarize um, mean of score, now what it's going to do is for each of these data frames, so this is Jen, this is Sarah, and then this is Ben, it's going to give me the mean for each of those. And so what summarize does is it returns one row for each group. I'm gonna say that again because it's really important. One row for each group. Because underneath, it really has three different data frames that it's thinking of. And so it's taking all the values in a column and it's sort of flattening that into one value. So each group, take all the values in the column, flatten it with some function. It could be the mean, it could be the standard deviation, etc. And then it puts it all back together for you in a nice format where you've got the name of the group and then what you had there. And so 
That's grouped by summarize. We can also do a group by mutate. And so now, what it does is it still thinks in terms of these groups. It still views gen as a group and it operates on gen first. And so it says for gen, create a new column by mutating. That's the mean of score. So the mean, the score was eight and 10 and it's creating a new column. So it's putting it in every single row. So nine and nine goes in both rows. If it goes on to Sarah and says the same thing, give me a new column where each row is the mean. And so this adds on to the data frame. It adds a column and it keeps the same number of rows. Whereas if you remember summarize, flattens to be one row for each group. And the number of columns is literally just the number of functions that I get it here. And then one column uh, for the group name. The last thing I'll show you, so that's mutate to look at it one more time. One other thing we can do with mutate is after I mutate, I could do, I could say, like, I only want people that were high scoring. So let me only take people where the mean was greater than seven. And I'm only going to get gen here because it's filtering based on this mean column. And so it basically said, put into groups for each person, create a new column with the mean, keep the same number of rows as the original column, and then filter um, those columns. So it's cool. Like, I love writing the pipe like this because you can step through it. Okay, I create the groups, I create the mean, and now I filter. You can also do a group by and a filter, which is essentially the same thing as that mutate and then filter step, but it's a little bit shorter. And so these two things do the same thing. This says, take data, create a group, and then only give me the groups where the mean of that group is greater than seven. And again, I'm gonna get gen. I could equivalently do something like, only give me groups where there's exactly two rows. And if we look at the data, we would expect that it should return gen and gen and Sarah and Sarah, but it shouldn't give me Ben because this N parentheses says give me the number of rows. And so that should give you a starting point on understanding how these verbs filter, mutate, and summarize change when I add group by first. And the key is to always think about this picture of the, of the program or R separating your data frame into one data frame for each group, applying some function to that group, whether it's mutate to create a new column or summarize to flatten to one row, and then putting it together. Um, Hadley and folks call this split, apply, combine. Split the data frame apply a function, and then I'll combine it back together into your final data frame.